Hello, my name is Michael and I work for Rel Systems. In this video we'll be going through the basics of setting up a CAD SIM simulation, including a few process modules. In the previous video I had set up a stream chemistry and made a very basic simulation of a single process stream representing a pipe, and I'll be continuing this video where we left off last time. As a brief overview, I'll be creating a flow sheet with a mixer, a separator, and a tank, as well as going through some of the basics of using quick controller specifications. We set up this line in our last simulation, and I want to create a second line of the same stream composition. To do this, I'll select Draw Process Line again, and I'll left click and hold where I want to start it, and while holding left click, uh, drag over to where I want to finish, and release left click to draw our line. Uh, I'm done drawing lines for now, so I can return to my select tool by either using the select up here, or in most cases I will simply press the escape key on my keyboard, and we'll go back to the select tool. Um, in this case, notice these are the same stream type. They're both dark blue streams, and if you select one of them, you'll see it's process zero. You can see CADSIM, you can have multiple different types of stream chemistries on a single sheet if you want. Um, more of an advanced topic, but for now, uh, we'll just keep everything on process zero, which is this dark blue line. Also notice there's no specifications on the second line that we drew, unlike the first one. When we enter simulation mode, it will prompt us to provide these specifications. For now though, I want to add my very first process module. A process module is simply a place where process streams are modified. More intuitively, these are unit operations. Uh, for example, a tank that mixes streams together, or a pump that increases the pressure in a stream. The first module we'll make is a mixer. And a mixer simply takes streams coming in, mixes them, and sends the mixture out as an output. A mixer differs from a tank in that it does not have a level, rather the mass overflows as the flow comes into the mixer. So there's simply just a volumetric holdup time inside. To set up this mixer, I will select the Draw Polygon button up here. So I'll select the button, and we're prompted to draw the polygon. I'm actually going to start it over here. So I'll left click and hold, and while holding it, we drag to another corner, release, and we've created a polygon, and we're prompted to give it a name. So before I give it a name, I just want to talk about this. The name of polygons is very important in CADSIM. When we enter simulation mode, CADSIM will figure out what a unit is based on the unit's name the number of streams going in, and the number coming out. And finally, certain polygons require named streams. I'll show you one of those uh, later on as we go. However, for now, we'll continue making our mixer. To make this a mixer, we simply give it the name Mixer. So, just write Mixer in the name there. And we'll press OK. We're now prompted to continue drawing with another process, leaving the mixture. I'll just draw a short line leaving for now and I'll press uh, return to the select icon by pressing the escape key. So right now this mixer takes only one input and sends it to the output. I want to mix it with the second stream we drew previously. To do this I can simply draw a new line and connect it to the mixer. So I'll select draw process line. I want to start from up here, left click and hold, and point it into the mixer. At this point I would like to run the simulation. We could continue drawing our separator and our tank, however, it's best practice to run a simulation often while you're drawing it. This will improve your workflow because if you have errors in your model, you can find them and fix them faster. If you have made many changes to your drawing uh, and you've generated multiple errors in the process, this may confound and create larger problems where it takes more time to sort out what's exactly happening. So typically, even with small changes, I'll enter simulation mode just to see what's happening and make sure I haven't made a silly small mistake. So I'm going to enter simulation mode again by choosing the green arrow here. We'll be prompted to save the drawing and I'm just going to select yes. File and we'll be asked to specify the second stream that we created. I'm going to put some quick values in using the direct setting multi-spec and I'm just going to make them all zero for now and we'll see what effect that has later. So I'm just stacking them on top of each other. After we've specified the stream, CADSIM will ask us for the volume of the mixer. This is what's known as a free variable for the polygon. 
Again, I'll use a multi-spec and simply use the default values. It will prompt us to save, and I'll agree. While running the simulation, we can add water into the mixer. So on the second line here, what I'm going to do is add one kilogram per second of water. And as we run it, when we select the line, we'll see there's water flowing here. There's about five and a quarter kilograms per second of water coming into the mixer. And if we look at, at the outlet, we can see they've added together to make that much water leaving. Now I want to add a separator module. I want to remove the solid gypsum from the process, leaving the mixer. So I'll go back to draw mode. Again, we select return to drawing here. And it asks us to save. And I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. So move over to the right a bit. Again, I'll draw a polygon. And when I'm done, I'll give it a name. So this is going to be my separator. And I'm going to call it gypsum separator. When CADSIM reads this name, it will pick up the word separator and know what type of unit module it is, as long as all of the other characteristics are met. So I'm just going to give it one outlet, and press escape to return to my select tool. This is an advantage when you're drawing your sheet, because now you can label equipment with the same name as it is in the field, and you can include equipment numbers, um, and generally be much more specific about what the process module is simulating. One thing that's obviously different about a separator and a mixer is that a separator requires two outlets. So even if we enter simulation mode right now, even though the word separator is on the module, it won't know what to do with it. So I'll demonstrate that quickly. When we enter simulation mode, I'll save it. It will ask us for duty. I can press show to see who's asking for it. And we see the gypsum separator blinks. So right now, CADSIM does not recognize that the separator module is anything, so it's making it a default module. Default modules can be very useful. However, I'm not going to cover them in this video. For now, I'll press cancel and return to draw mode. Generally, if you're prompted to provide duty for a module and you weren't expecting it, chances are you have not fully uh, specified what type of process module you're trying to create. So I'll press cancel here. I wanted to show this because if you are asked to specify duty and you don't want a default module, you should go back to draw mode and determine why. In this case, I know my separator needs at least two outlets. I can find information about the module requirements by searching the help files. Uh, but for now, I'll draw a second outlet, leaving my separator as the underflow. So again, left click and hold, I'll point it down. So now I'll enter simulation mode again. I'll save it. And notice now, instead of asking for duty, it's asking us to specify our water variable. For a separator, we're going to separate phases. Each phase is going to be represented in CADSIM by a mother component. This is the first component of that phase in each phase category. For example, the liquids in aqueous phase will follow the mother component of water. So I'll specify the amount of water by setting the percent suspended solids to 25% on the underflow. And I'll simply use a direct setting for that. So we can see our free variable is water, and our free variable water is going to be controlled to satisfy that condition. Suspended solid concentration is 25%. Press finish. For the solids, which is represented by the mother component of gypsum, I'll simply put their flow rate to zero on the overflow. So again, I'll use a direct setting, and I'll put it on the overflow, and I've set it to zero. Press finish. I'll save it. Now, while I'm running the simulation, we'll see that there are no solids leaving the overflow, but our aqueous ferric chloride and water are. And if we look at the underflow, we can see all of the gypsum is going down here enough water and aqueous phase is coming that way as well to satisfy that condition that 25% uh, of the flow is suspended solids. Finally, I want to add a tank. To do this, I'll use the insert part mechanism in CADSIM Plus. First, I'll place the anchor at the end of the underflow line, which is right here. Next, I'll select insert part. And then from here, we can see our parts libraries. and 
you can see there's a whole library of things you can go through and, and see different types of parts that are created. For now I'm going to choose process and I'm going to choose the tank dot par which is the tank part. I'll press insert and I'll select OK. This looks in a decent place and it will ask us for a name. So I'm going to call this the underflow tank. So I'll give it the name underflow and select OK. Notice that this tank has some extra features included with it because it was a part, uh, such as there's a high level alarm, a low level alarm, a little animation bar for the level, as well as a flow controller leaving the tank. As you develop your simulations, you can save pieces that you like and reuse them as parts for your own library and simply import them into your drawing this way. Parts are useful ways as well to learn uh, what different types and names. Parts are also a useful way to learn the types of modules there are, the names they require, and the number of inlets and outlets a particular process module requires. For example, here on this tank part, we see that the tank module requires a stream with a name overflow on it. Uh, kind of in a light gray here. Um, and this is obvious for a tank. If the tank level goes above 100%, uh, the water has to go somewhere. We can also select module help to go to the help file to learn more about the module and what parameters the module needs. So here we can see information about different keywords you can include. As well up here there's the module parameters box and this will say what's required. So for a tank we need at least one inlet and we need at least two outlets and we can see that one of the outlets has to have the name overflow. And if we can satisfy all of those conditions when we draw it ourselves it will be recognized as a tank. For now I'll close the help file and go back to CAD Sim Plus. So running the simulation again, prompt us to save, uh, we're now going to specify the free variables on our underflow tank. So I'll select again multi-spec and I'm just going to use the default values again and stack them all on top of each other. Now when we run our simulation we'll notice that the level bar in the tank will briefly fluctuate but ultimately will steady out to its 80% level. If we want to change the level in the tank we can change our PID control specification here and change it to 50% for example and we'll see the level bar changes that way. As a final step we want to create a save file. This is an important concept for your dynamic simulation because it represents the initial condition of your entire simulation. The save file we generate will have all of the information in the process model as it exists in that simulated instance of time. So to make one we'll pause the running simulation, select file, and save start file. This will create a file with the same name as your CAD SIM drawing but with a .sav extension. So for this how to CAD SIM part 2 .draw file it now has an associated how to CAD SIM part 2 .sav file in the same folder. As long as these two files are in the same directory the next time we enter this CAD SIM drawing simulation mode we'll be prompted to load the save file. So to demonstrate this quickly I'll return to draw mode, enter simulation mode again and I'll run it just one time step. But now we get this dialog box here asking if, if we wanted to load that start file or to not use that start file. So I'll select yes. Most of the time it's a good idea to load the start file as long as the save file you made was in a stable and ideally a steady state place. Uh, this will help in terms of converging your simulations as you go forward. So that's all I wanted to show for this video. Uh, I hope it was useful and we'll continue this series uh, in the future.